What's up, guys? Welcome back. Bah, 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 bah. We're back. We're back with another one, another another big one. This time we're covering Firebase Auth. In case you want to boot an app that is gonna have an off section, you know you have users, you want to store information, you wanna you wanna set up authentication, right? Firebase provides a good tool for that. And in this video, we're gonna be going through and booting out this whole section here. You see here we have uh the, the text fields for the email and the password. We have this forgot the password in case you forget the password. You can sign in, and we also have a whole registration flow to create a new user. And if you type something that's mumbo jumbo, we also have uh error handling in the app and even if you type something, let's see this, we have error handling and you can, we cover how you sign in. We don't set up a, actually this account is disabled because too many sign in attempts. All right. We're able to sign in. As you saw, we didn't go through and set up a whole, um, home screen or anything. We were just covering the off section. We, we did set up the sign out. So you sign out and then you get sent back to the login screen and you can create a new account Call this firebase at gmail and we're going to have the most secure password ever. No one's going to figure this out, right? So with firebase, when you register an account, it automatically signs you in if it's successful and yeah, that's what we're covering in this video and even set up the full forgot password. So by the end of this video, you should be able to set up firebase auth into your app and actually send that off to the app store. A huge shout out to Max. He's also an iOS developer and he helped me out with this project and also a few other projects with the iOS Dojo and the YouTube. So shout out to Max. And if you guys want to learn more, I have a new course on the iOS Dojo where you can master Swift UI, MVVM and source control. We put out a full fitness app. I'll take you from start to finish and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Peace. All right, y'all, let's get into it. So we are going to create a project. Hit app, make sure you're on iOS. We're just going to be using a project from scratch. And I'll call this Firebase Auth. Make sure you Swift UI, Swift, no storage. And you hit next. Create. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to create a new file, Swift UI file. I'm going to call this sign in view. And I'm going to go with sign in. You can go with login if you want personal preference. I'll go with sign in. That's just what I like. I think that's a song. Um, and I'm going to bring in a file for the image on our screen. Uh, let's bring in, I'm going to bring in two and just to play around with them, see how this looks. So we create the V stack. <laughs> Why is the K capitalized? And in this V stack, let's create the image. Let's do logo one, make this resizable, make this a uh, scale to fill. Let's go with a height of 150. This looks good. Cool. And what we can do is we can call max height here dot infinity and you set the alignment to top and we get that. So it looks like we should get some padding at the top. Let's do 24, 32, um, 48. Haha, 48 looks good. After this, actually, one thing I want to do is I want to try to put an overlay on here. Let's see how this looks. So we'll do a lean, li a linear, a linear gradient. And we call this one. And in here, the gradient will be, um, dot white two. dot clear top to bottom. And this is wrong. I need to call gradient first and then put the colors. So dot white dot clear. Oh, I flip these around bottom to top. And now this is doing this. Let me see what happens if I put this above the frame. I think that's the issue. There we go. 
this is um what is if we do like a blue hmm with an opacity of 0 0.5 Let's see how orange looks. Or you could do white. It's up to you. I think I, um, I think I'm not going to use a gradient. You guys can feel free to use it. What does a black do? I'll keep the black for now. Maybe removed. Now we need some text fields. So this text field will be for email address and I'm going to extract these out and put it in its own view. This is just for now. This will be email. Actually going to extract these into the view model in a second. And actually let's do it now. Right? Why, why, why wait? We can call class. Um, this will be sign in view model paste these in here. We do not need state and we need to import observation and then wrap this with the observable macro. And now we actually first, well, then we have to create this and I'm going to use state, but I'm pretty sure this is going to cause an issue because we are binding it to a text field. So I'm pretty sure we will have to call bindable. Let's see view model dot sign in. Actually, wait, dot what email. Do we get an issue here? We don't. Let's refresh this preview. It shows up right here. And if I type in, nothing shows up. Let's, um, Let's fix the formatting a little bit. Let's add some padding. Let's give this. So we're going to give it a foreground style of dot primary, and we're going to create a background here. This background is going to be a rounded rectangle of corner radius do like 20. And you just want to call stroke or you could actually call fill ultra thin material. That gives it a nice look. Now we call stroke. So we're going to call which stroke content with, um, let's do dot primary for now and stroke style. We'll call this and then we'll bring in line width of one. And you can change the width here, like five, very thick. We'll just stay with one and we are going to cut this and put it in its own V stack. And then in here, we'll put some horizontal padding or just padding in general. That shifts it down pretty nicely. We still have to fix the formatting and to do this, we will call spacer with a min length. So let's just call a spacer here and a spacer here. Shifts is up there. We are probably going to use a min, min length here. All right. So there's a few more things we need to add to this text field. We should add autocorrect is disabled. And what's the other one? This one set it to never. Cause you don't want to do that on a email address. You don't want to autocorrect and you don't want to capitalize. Just let the user do it, do their thing. All right. This looks good. How does this look with orange? Maybe or blue. Hmm. Something to play around with something to play around with. All right. So one thing I want to do actually is I want to create a modifier that will actually, we don't even need to create a modifier because what, what we'll do is I'm just going to create a custom text field for our for our app. So when you're creating a custom text, but usually you will name it something Well, you name it, your app and then text field. So Firebase, that's the name of our app or a project text field. 
Sometimes if it's a very specific, it'd probably be like Firebase log or sign in text field, Firebase auth text field since it's for the off section. But we're going to call this Firebase text field. Copy this, put it in here. Um, and then we will require a state, call this placeholder of type string and binding text of type string. You could also use a modifier to do this, but I find it easier to just use a custom text field because if you use a modifier, you would have to just call text field and then call dot modification or dot modifier and then put in your the, whatever modification you made. But let me know actually down below what you prefer. Refresh this. And now we just call Firebase text field. Placeholder is email address. Text is view model dot email. And this works is good okay and now you might be thinking let's call firebase text for the password but we're going to create a another view actually for the secure text field because that's what the password text field is pretty much I'll show you guys an example. Actually, it's not even called secure text field. It's just called secure field. Here, I'm going to copy this. Let's just copy this. Copy and paste in. Makes your life easier. Paste it in here. And this becomes password. Let's comment this out for a second. Actually, no. We are going to need the preview, so don't comment it out. Placeholder password set this equal to constant. I'll let this load. So the difference with a text field and a secure text field is a secure text field or secure field. I keep saying text field shows up like this, you see, and I'm not sure why that is showing up here. So let's call this in here. And we will call placeholder. This will be password. And I'm, we made the placeholder variable here because, or yeah, it's variable, AKA it's dynamic. You can change it whenever you call this because maybe you'll use it for something that's not a, an email or a password. And that's the reasoning behind that. And let's refresh this, see what we get. Cool. Now, one thing to note is actually, why is this showing up here? Let's, let's run this in a simulator and see what happens. Ah, actually I need to change my device. Let's run this. Oh, I see this shows up when their caps lock is on. I guess sometimes it shows up. Sometimes it doesn't. Oh, there we go. In the simulator, it doesn't go away if I turn off my cap locks. I mean, not in the simulator, in the preview. That's why I ran this on the simulator, just to see what's up. And then it only does it for the secure text field. That's interesting. Cool thing to know. Now let's go back to our secure field and refresh the preview. Because we're, we're not done yet. Because we need to make our custom field that allows users to click on right here and be able to see aka show the password or not basically show and hide it that's a cool text field and feature that a lot of text fields provide but i don't believe apple has given us the capability to do so so we're going to create our own so we go back to secure text field 
And we will have to create a new variable here. Call this a state var show password. And let's put this underneath the placeholder. So we have type string. Oh, actually, this is a Boolean, sorry. <laughs> And what we want to do is we want to say if show password else hit command B, we need to put this in here. Let's say this is false. But this is false. We may have to change this to binding. Uh, we will see in a second. Although I'm, I'm, I don't think so. All right, show password. And then we just want a text. Make this a text field. That's pretty much it, <laughs> to be honest. And actually, we'll make we'll, we'll need to make this binding. Actually, I just see, I just saw. And oh, one thing we can call here is we can just call Firebase text field. This would be password, and this would be the binding string, which is text. And I want to have an overlay. And this overlay, so this becomes a dot constant false. In this overlay, we're going to add the icon or the image that's going to show the pretty much the hide and show button. So if this is being shown, what should be display? We should show the eye. So, and the eye is what I'm referencing is this. If you look up eye, you have eye, eye dot fill, and I think there's eye slash. So we're going to try with eye first and just see how that looks. Let's refresh this preview and oh, we're getting an issue because of this. Just call dot constant false for now. Close this, go here. Where is the I? Oh, we got to change this to true. Cool. And one thing we can do is we can set an alignment to this overlay. To trailing. And we can call some padding that should fix that. Yeah. And one thing we can do, we can call a content transition and do symbol effect. Cool. And we will need to actually make this overlay a button. I realize. There we go. And in this button, let's do show password equal false. Paste that image in here again. So what happens when we click on this? Uh, this is uh, it's not going to show because we have this constant in the um, in our preview. So now we need to create a var in our sign in view model called show password to set this equal to false. And we will bind it to that. So we call dollar sign view model dot show password. Ah, we gotta set this equal to true actually. Cause we haven't set up the false case. There we go. Oh. Refresh it. Oh, looks like we're saying email address here, so What's going on?
Oh, <laughs> ah, that's funny. I didn't notice that. Shout out whoever noticed that. We had a bug. I didn't put. I didn't call a placeholder here. But now it's there. We go. So if we go back here, we should see password. Yep, and this goes away. And we pretty much just copy this overlay, paste it in here, set this equal to true. Also, you notice that in this button, I have a role and Swift UI recommends that you use a role for your buttons. That's something I've been trying to do recently. The only two options are cancel and destructive. So. That's just something to keep in mind. And I'm going to go now to the image. I have to type in I to find this ice dot slash. And this one show here, but if we go here, there we go. There we go. You see? And it's being shown by default because I have false. I mean, true here. Hi. That's what I, that's what I typed in. And I noticed, oh, it looks like caps lock is on in the preview. I don't know. Something's going on with the preview, but we're not here for that. All right. So now we got these text fields set up. What's next? All right, one thing we can do too is in this secure text field, we can call with animation. I think that'll make it look nicer. And let's actually pin this view here. And now if I go back here, it'll still show. Let's see what happens if I call dot snappy. Snap. That's cool. So we would use that and make sure you put true here. And one thing to note here is you kind of want to be careful that this matches up what you have in here. So we have a padding. Let's do this. Get rid of the simulator. I mean the preview. I keep calling it simulator. So Penny, primary, background. Yep. It's all the same. Just something to note because you will have issues if, well, not issues, but things will look different. All right, before we continue, I'm going to do something really quickly is I'm going to go here and create a new color set. Call this app color. And I'm going to try to Let's see, show color panel. Can we go to a wheel? I'm going to try, let's try blue at first. Oh, I should copy this. Boom, boom, boom. Here we go. So I'm going to copy this, change the heck the decimal. Enter. There we go. Now these are the same. Typically, if you're integrating this into your own app or have your own app, then you would put whatever color you decided is your app color. And now let's see, we can call color here. App color, and I'm going to copy this. And paste it around. And yeah, so that would have to go here as well, Actually, but we can keep this as primary. And we will now add a foreground style of this. And change this color to app color. 
We'll probably change this app color. It's just what I'm going with for now. I think an orange might be nice, actually. Cool. So maybe I'll change it to orange. All right, change it to orange. And now under here, we call button. This time, a different type of button. And this is going to be for not show password, but forgot password. We're going to need a handle if you a user forgot your password, right? Oh, let me close this out. There we go. Make this dot bold. What if we do a little bit of top padding? That looks good. That looks good. If you want, this is like, um, optional because if you want, you can, you can, uh, attach this forgot password to the trailing, but it's up to you. It's up to personal preference, to be honest. Whatever you feel looks best to you, you can center it or you can leave it trailing. I think I'm going to center it. Let me know what you think looks better or if the Apple guidelines recommend something else, but I'm going to center it. And then underneath that, we need another button, this one, and this button will be sign in. Okay. Let's see. What should we do here? We will call dot padding, make this bold. And actually I'm going to change the button I use here. So I'm going to use this one dot cancel. Although this is really not a cancel. This is why I don't like using roll, but let's see if we get any issues if we don't use roll. And in this, we will have a text sign in bold a foreground style of dot secondary. And what we need to do is we need to add some padding here Add a frame of a height. Let's add 55 and let's add a background background, which will be a rounded rectangle corner radius of 10. Fill. We call dot fill and we will say color app color. So that's what happens when we get primary. Oh, one thing to note too is it looks like color dot app references app color that we called here. Oh, well, that's not what I want. So I'm going to go with color UI color. Actually, we can go with dot white here since this is always going to be orange. The frame can be a max width dot infinity, get it all the way big. Should probably do 20. I want to keep it the same corner radius we use for these 20. Yep. And this will be a padding of dot top. Actually, might as well call vertical here. This looks good. Sign in. Hmm. Look, <laughs> it looks like we didn't add the foreground color here, which maybe might be an intended effect, but I don't know. It probably just looks like you forgot it. I don't think it looks good. <laughs> All right, we're almost done with our UI. Now what's next? The last part is registration, new user. And for that part, we're going to go under here beneath this spacer call. Um, what are we going to create here? We are going to create a, we're going to create another V stack here. And 
in here we'll say text don't we'll say don't have an account yet question mark and then we will create a button action and a label and i'm gonna call this one otherwise we don't get this nice formatting. So what do we do here? We have a text, which will be register. No code for it yet, no action. Uh, this will be padding, pretty much same treatment we gave here. Although it's, I think it's gonna be different foreground. Let's add some padding to our VStack. Make this padding dot horizontal. So you notice the padding gives us a weird formatting here. And I wrote, I realized did something kind of wrong here. So we can remove this padding and we just have to change this to like 350 maybe. Maybe like we need to do ignore safe area region. We get that. Let's see what does 300 look like. Change this to 300 and the last thing we would have to do is could we get a bit more Bottom, bottom, <laughs> bottom, bottom padding here. Cool. This looks good. I want to change this though. I want to change this to just stroke with, um, I believe we would call color app color. There we go. Let's copy this, paste this as the uh, foreground style. And let's put that here for the foreground style. Let's add some spacing here of 24. Get rid of this. And we could, huh? I think I might go with dot blue. What do you guys think? If we go with app color here, then we should probably change the foreground style of this to app color. All right. I just saw UI looks good. Um, let's play around with this. Forgot password. This is a button. This is a button. This is nothing. This is a button. All right, cool. Now we need to set up our actions in here. So to do this, we pretty much need to integrate Firebase now. Let's integrate Firebase first. So pause this and all right so we open up google and just go to firebase.google.com this is free like you guys can create an account you might be asked to put a card for billing but no one's you're not gonna get charged that much it's just gonna be like one person using the app so you don't have to worry about that we'll call this firebase let's just call this uh firebase -y. Uh, you can enable it or not, depending if you want to use it. If you're just using auth, then you don't have to enable it. And you select the billing account. Right, once your project is ready, hit continue. You'll be taken here. And now we just have to click, let me make this bigger. Just click Apple iOS. That's all we're working with. And in here we have to go to our project. So let's open up our project. Go here to the project and Go to assign any capabilities. We're going to copy this bundle identifier, paste that in here. You can put this if you want, it's optional. Then you hit the next or continue. Now we just need to download the plist. It's downloaded as you see here, we hit next. Now we need to add our to the SDK, but before we do that, let's Go to here and go to finder because that's where the, you should find the downloaded file from the plist. 
All right. And you want to just take this, drag it in here. Make sure you hit copy items if needed. Hit finish. If you have this number here, make sure you get rid of it. Otherwise your app will not work. So we close this and we are almost there. Now we go back to Google. Let's go to this SDK documentation. Actually, I don't even think this is the documentation. This is where we add it into our project. So we go to add package dependencies, paste that in here. Just hit add package. Let this load probably takes a few seconds, depending on your internet speed and the power of your Mac. And here you can select everything you want to add here. And this is kind of a lot, to be honest, I actually just bring everything in because you don't know what you might not need. I know for sure we don't need the messaging. We don't need storage and it looks like I don't have a choice. I put none and then I go away and it, it shows up still. <laughs> So never mind, just bring in all of it, I guess. We have no no freedom of choice. So give this a second. It's gonna like index and everything. Let's go back to documentation though while this loads and we will hit next. So this is how they recommend you to install it in Firebase. I mean it, with Swift UI. So we're gonna go here and just paste this in here. Hit command B. If you get errors, that means that you're um you either imported it wrong or the project is still like indexing the whole other packages. As you can see here, like it's still because it has to build the app now with all the packages. Oh, what's going on here? Let's say, let's add like we did not see that error and hit command B again. And this is a weird issue I've never seen before. So we are going to go to Google and just paste that in there. Firebase with, um, all right, so I got this back working and I tried to rename the project, but that ended up becoming a dumpster fire really quickly. And I almost had it though, but it became a dumpster fire. So I just created a new project just to actually get along with it. And I'll make, um, uh, and I'll make like a, I'll make sure to note at the beginning of this video that do not name your project Firebase Auth because it will blow up in your face. It's a fun learning experience and uh, yeah, so. This is working now. I have imported the package. I brought in the, the P list from Google. I, I redid all this, basically created a new project, not a new project, but I removed the previous app from this Firebase project and I added a new one. So we did this part and now we were, we were working on this. And we have to do this and something I want to try here is I, I've seen people use the just Firebase. What is it? Config. Just call this in the init. I've seen this work and I want to try it and see if it works here. That gets rid of the need of creating the app delegate and all that. The way to test it or just run it, just run the simulator. And if it runs and doesn't crash, then it's working. If this gives you issues, just do it the normal way. Do it the normal way. Don't need to. I just like this cause it's a lot simpler. All right. So yeah, it, it loads up and we don't get any errors or anything. That means it's working. So we did this and you're all set. Continue the console. Cool. Now that we have set up Firebase in our project, last thing we want to do is go to authentication and we need to enable authentication. So we'll say get started. And we are just doing email for this video. All right. And we do enable you to save and usage or settings. And that should be actually, I was looking at the rules, but you only have rules in the other, like if you have a database in Firebase or a storage, but you don't have rules here. So we can minimize this, go back to Xcode. Let's go to our sign in. So we have to, let's exp 
port this into its own function. Actually, no, because we're not even going to use a sign in view model yet because we have to create our auth service, which is what we're going to use to communicate with Firebase auth because you don't want to communicate with Firebase in your view model. And of course not your view because what you would have to do is you, let's say this is so in your view, you would have to import Firebase auth. And we have no module called Firebase. Huh? What's going on here? Let's see. Let's go to our, let's, let's see what frameworks do we have? Oh, we need to add more frameworks. So we go here. Yeah. And why do, it's interesting. Why are, are these only the frameworks that came with us? Weird. So if you had this issue, let's actually, I'm going to remove this package and we do this again because I thought it was bringing in all the packages when I when I added it. So let's go to add package dependencies. I have it here, but if you don't have it here, you just get the URL and grab package. Let's see. Yeah, so here it's saying it's going to add all these packages, including Firebase auth to it. So let's say add package. And I'm going to go to targets. Yeah, now it shows up. Not sure what happened the first time around. Probably because it was a new project. I don't know. Things happen. So I just removed the package, brought it back in. And now we have all the Firebase packages with us. Let's clear the issues and clean the build folder. Yes. So we clean the build folder. Give it a second. Now that the build folder is cleaned, let's command. All right. I'm just going to continue with the example and this should probably be resolved. So we would have to import Firebase auth in our view. And that would mean that in the future, let's say we change to Superbase auth because that's an alternative. And maybe there was business or maybe you created your own authentication system because Firebase doesn't uh, meet the business requirements anymore. Then you would have to go into your view and make a bunch of changes there. And it would be, it'd be a little scary because you're, code would be tightly coupled, meaning, meaning that your Firebase auth stuff is in your view and you wouldn't want that. Then you could be like, all right, let's move our Firebase auth stuff into our view model. But then it would be kind of similar. Cause then you would be going into your view. It would, it would couple your view model to your auth Firebase auth. And then when you have to make changes, you would have to go into the view model and things would break. But with the off service, the thinking behind it is you can import Firebase auth here and create the final class, call this auth service, right? And in this class, you can create the functions that are performing all the Firebase and like sign in auth requirements, like the sign in, the register, the sign out and whatever other sign in or method you need for authentication. And all you would have to do is change the auth service in the future. If you were switching over to a different type of auth setup, like if you were doing super, you're switching to super base, or if you were switching to your own authentication system. And that would mean like, even in the view model, you wouldn't have to worry about that because you would still be returning the same thing from the methods in your auth service. So let's get into that. So you guys can actually see what the hell I've been talking about. So the first function is going to be sign in and I'll say with email. Cause that's what this is and not string, but for this, let's no. we need to require an email as a string and a password as a string. And this will be async throws. Cool. And I realized we didn't, um, we should probably do register first, but I just want to sign in. And one thing we need to create here, or we can create is we're going to have a private let auth equal auth. I believe it's auth. Yeah, it's auth dot auth. 
and then you can call this auth here dot sign in oh sign in here we go with email and password cool and this is async await the email will be this the password will be this and what does this actually return let me cut this sign in this returns an auth data result so let result equal that and let's print the result cool and also the next or the the one we should have done first is the register. So here you can do register new user as a name, or I'm just going to go register because we will know by default that a register is a new user. So register with email. And we do email. Oh, string and password. I believe that's the only things that are required. I'm going to use this since that's pretty much the same setup that Firebase should return to us. Instead, we'll do register. Nope. Or is it sign up? Is it not register? Wait, let's see. Dot. What are our options? Ah, create user. Creates and on success signs in user. Cool. So we have this. Uh, oh, <laughs> I did not notice that I did that here. Let's go ahead and actually use a singleton here. So let shared equal auth service. And why a singleton? It's just easier and to be honest, it, it won't matter if you're like in a small to medium project. If you're in a bigger project, then it might matter. And even if you are in a bigger project, you can always, there's ways of using dependency injection, even with a singleton and sometimes like, and you might even get rid of the private in case you need more flexibility. But to be honest, in most projects, you, it won't, it won't matter. And yeah, with this, now we can go into our sign in. We're going to take this out and actually take this out too. And I'm going to cut this and I'm going to create a new group, call this auth and I'm going to create a new group here, call this view model. And new file, Swift file, and this is a sign in view model. And now I just paste all this stuff in here. We're still missing a few things. We need to create a views, drag this into the views. And we can actually create a new group here, call it service, drag this service into here, hit command B and this error should go away. And we're going to go back to this view model funk register with email. And what are we taking in? We don't even actually take in anything because the email and password are right here. Async throws. And if you are following MVVM, you might not even do async throws because you could probably handle your do catch in here. And something I just realized is this is the sign in. So we're not going to be registering in this view. If we go back, we only have the option to, to sign in. So we can't really, we can't really register, but what I'll do is, is and this is taking a second, it's going to take some time. What I'll do is I'll, um, I'll probably just use the, the register function in, in the sign in method just to test it out. All right, so this is our view. Yeah. So we only have access to sign in and like the sign in fields here. 
and we haven't set up our register yet. So this should be sign in with email and the um, function we'll call, do we call it straight? Um, let's see. Shared dot. Looks like we need to do this in a task. Task shared. Sign in with email. And the other thing we need is a do, we're going to need a do catch. Sign in with email. Actually, we have to use the, um, not the sign in, but the, we're using register just to test this out. Password. Um, let's go back to our off service. Oh, it's static let. I forgot the static. Yeah. When you use a, a, a true singleton, we'll have a static let and also a private initializer. Although this will be optional, but then it's not a true singleton quote unquote. And let's print any errors that Firebase will throw at us. Yeah. Cool. And now in our sign in, whenever we tap sign in, we can just say view model dot sign in with email. Makes it very clean. Just one line. And of course you will, and we probably will later down in this video set up uh, like error handling. Like if you have two lines of here, you don't want it to run. I mean, not two lines, but if you have like two characters, like some form validation for the email and maybe requirements for the password. So this should work in the, this should work in the, in the, in the preview, but I'm gonna run this on simulator when I'm sometimes I'm a little iffy when it, when it comes to actually testing in the preview, I just like using it for the UI part. All right. So, and also let me open up my firebase. So we'll do this right here. We'll do it live. Although the simulator has to load <laughs> and I also have to change the target, not the target, but the here. So let's just do sign in view so we can actually see what's going on. All right. So I'm going to use a generic email, Jason at Gmail. You can do that while you're testing. And I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, very secure password. I think Firebase requires you to have eight characters in a password. So that's what we're going with. Let's hit sign in. All right. I'm not sure what, oh, we got a result. Oh, we did get a result. So let's go to our off service. And we can close these actually. Why is this open? All right, there we go. And let's print user. I think that'd be the smart thing to print here. All right. And if you refresh this, you can see if it worked, it did work and we are signed in. Woo. So that means it's working. The thing to change is let's change this to sign in with email, email password. So let's, let's do some form validation. And to do that, the first, the first one is email. So you can look up Swift, um, regex to for email address, something like this, and it'll give you 
There's a bunch of answers here. And you can test these. I found the one that works. There's one I forget. But one of these is the, uh, this one. So we're going to be using this one. So that means we have to create an extension on string. And all right. So you go here, new group, utils, new file, string extension. And we just paste that in here. All right. And then we can go back to our auth in our sign in view model. So we can create a function validate form. And in here we will do our checks and then we can just call this function here. So in this validate form, what do we do? So we are going to check if email dot is valid email. And let's mark this throws. So if it's not a valid email, we will throw an error. And, and let's create an enum up here. We'll call this app auth error. Cool case in valid, invalid email. I might rename this. I'm just going with app auth error. Cause I think we will use this in the registration and the sign in and registration of view models. Invalid email. Oh, I forgot to conform to error. So if this, if the email is invalid, you want to throw that. Else, if the password dot count is less than eight, we want to throw case invalid password length. Throw app error. Try validate form. So we're going to call this and let's run this and let's see what happens. We should see this print. We should see some of these errors printed. Where is this? Move this in here. There we go. Yep, it's a call. Oh, it called error one, so it's calling password. Like, yeah, so the the Firebase or the the comment on Stack Overflow was right that this work this returns true. But let's see. So if I have four characters in here, what happens? Yeah, it's returning the second one invalid password length. So this is working. And let's try a success case. So. Five, six, seven, eight, sign in. So we got this, but I'm not sure if that's just a small error or actual. Ah. So what's going on here? I believe there might be an issue because we have an active session. Cause we never signed out. All right. So in order to implement a sign out, the first thing we need to do is create a sign out function in our, um, in our off service and with Firebase, it's super easy. Just call auth dot sign out and you, it's not even asynchronous. It just throws boom. And that gives us the option to sign out. And how are we going to handle that? So. We need to create a 
we need to create a method in our app file to know the different, like to know the app state, which is if the user is signed in or not to show either a sign in view or to show like a home view. So let's create a new file. Swift file, call this home view. All right, that's what we're gonna use here. And the way we're gonna use to identify whether a user signed in or not is we're gonna actually use our op service. And we're gonna use a new observation observable macro on the off service. And that'll give us access or that'll let us listen to changes to um to items within the off service. And the item we're gonna be listening to is the current user which is going to be of type firebase auth dot user. It'll be optional. And on, on initialization, we'll set the current user equal to auth dot current user. Since this will have a user, if there is a session active, when you initialize the auth service. And what we'll do as well is here in this result, we will set current user equal to this and set current user equal. Well, you could just copy this actually. Oh, did too much. There we go. And when we sign out, actually you need to set this equal to nil. Hit command B and I don't, we don't need self here. Cool, cool, cool. This is working. And now we go to our app file and in here we say if off service dot shared dot current user. So if this is not equal to nil, show our home view else show our sign in view. Run this Jason at Gmail one, two, three, four, five, six. And I realized the reason it wasn't working is because we changed this to sign in with email. So it was trying to sign in and not create a new user. But now you see our sign in flow works, which is dope. And if we go here, let's put this in a V stack. Oh, that's not what I try to do. V stack. And then we have a button. You can add a role destructive. For this, we need to wrap this in a do catch because we're going to put our sign in button here. And I know I just said, don't couple your code, but for something like this, I don't want to do the whole create a view model, blah, 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 blah. Since this is not the purpose of the video, the purpose of the video is for the authentication part. So we hit sign out or we call sign out, refresh this. We could just run it to be honest. It's going to, it should work. Trust me. Actually, I don't know. Being a little iffy this, this video. <laughs> started off shaky with naming this project Firebase Auth. We sign out. What happens? Ah, we get the sign out screen. This is cool. This is cool. And let's see. Sign in with email. Yeah, this is using sign in with email. So our sign in is pretty much set up. Okay, we can try it right now, right? So jason at gmail.com one two three four five six seven eight you can show your password to confirm it sign in sign out boom 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 i'm not a magician this is uh this is a live simulation this is not fake <laughs> and all right so what should we do ooh, ooh. let's put these in the, the utils to be honest since these are like custom fields just to clean this up. The next thing we need is a registration view, right? And I'm going to close the simulator actually. All right. Refresh this right here. We have a button 
And there's two ways you can go about this. You can show a sheet or you can show, or you can do a navigation. That's the two ways I see it. And if you want to do a navigation, you would change this to a, like a navigation link. Actually, I think you could just, you could embed this thing, this whole thing in a navigation stack and just change this to a navigation link like this, but we're going to present a sheet. So we're not doing that. And this will be here bar show registration. So this equal to false. Cool. And then that means down here, we will have a sheet is presented content and is presented will be view model dot show registration. And I, I hate when it does this type of, um, formatting. This present the home view. Let's see. We don't, so we can just keep it a state and we can see if it's working. Well, actually first we have to <laughs> on here, we would have to say view model. Show registration equal to true. There you go. It's working. So you don't even need to use bindable or anything. Cool. But now we need to actually create the registration view. So here we're going to call new view regist. We'll just call it register view. Register view for this sheet. Let's see. We can create a V stack. And in this V stack, I'm gonna create a H stack. Ew. I don't like, uh, not a fan of that. All right, text. And we'll have a text here called register now. And let's add a spacer here. And at the, uh, this will be at the very top and we can refresh the preview. So you guys can see, let's have a button, an action and a label. This is a destructive, or it could be a, we could just have it cancel. This will be to dismiss the view. So we will need to call environment key path, um, dismiss var dismiss. And we can just call this function here. Text. Oh, this is not even a text this is an image and the image will be, what is it? I think it's like X mark X mark circle. This one. And I, I brought in the wrong image because this needs to be a system image. So it's this one. You can use image scale and say dot large. And we will add a font here of large title, make it bold. And we can just add a foreground style here of dot primary. Uh, not that primary, uh, do color, you know, I color dot label. Let the preview load. There we go. We will probably change the size of this. Give it a second and we can add some padding off the bat here. Make it look nicer. All right. But underneath this, we need a text field for the email address. And we will need a view model. It looks like so at observable class register view model. And we have var. What is this? Um, 
email var password these have to be empty strings we have to declare them and password check we have to declare that var here actually state var view model equal to register view model and then we call view model email for this one and then we need a secure field password view model dot password Never mind. This is, <laughs> um, so we need to create two booleans show password, set this equal to false and show password check. Set this equal to false. This is supposed to be binding core. We bind this to the view model dot show password. Bind this to view model dot password. And then one more. Call this verify or confirm password. Show, no, accusation, uh, show password check. And this one is binding view model dot password check. Refresh the preview. How is this looking? Let's see. Ah, there we go. Not too bad. And then underneath this, you just call, <laughs> You want to create a button, which is register. And I just like to call this one nowadays and just get rid of this and then hit enter here because the other button doesn't, it doesn't let me do my thing. So this would be a text of register. You want to add some padding. Uh, what could we do? So we can actually reference the sign in button. What did we do? Bold. Let's just copy this. Paste that in here. That looks pretty good. This should be confirmed password though. I think I messed up, right? Did I mess up in the secure field as well? I knew it. <laughs> uh, I did that earlier. And this, and this also should be placeholder here. All right, let's see how this looks. Go back to our sign in view and We need to call that here and I want to have a dent. What is it? Is, I think it's called like, is it like sheet dent or something? Presentation dents. There we go. For here you do like an array or I believe it's a set, right? Yeah. It's, it's called, it asks for a set. And you can do a fraction and let's do half of the screen. Okay. All right. And I'm going to pin this view here. You can put this and then go back to the register. One thing I want to try is what happens if I do, I think this is going to look ugly at first, but we'll have to just make some changes. So you see here, we, it doesn't cover the whole thing. 
If we change it to max width, uh, infinity, max height dot infinity. I believe it should let us do it now. Register, there we go. We hit this, it goes away. Let's do a stroke here instead. With, let's do color dot blue. Yeah, let's just do stroke. Oh, maybe dot white will be good. I like it. I like it. I think large is the biggest scale we have. We'll keep it like this. Maybe make this title then. Oh, I accidentally ran the app. Ah. There we go. You could go with the orange background or the white background, whatever you prefer. And now we just need to handle the registration. So let's create a funk here. Register with email. And we'll call that here. Register with email. Is there anything else we need to handle? in our view, because we, of course, in our view model, we haven't done anything, but in our view, nope, because yeah, we do not. All right. So let's extract this out. And actually you don't, it looks like you don't need to import an observation anymore. So we need to create the view model though. So I cut it out and then Swift file. Register view model. Put this in here. Paste this. So for the form validation, we will have to let's go back to the sign of view model. Let's copy this. But paste it in here. We'll have a few more things to add because we need to make sure the email is valid. And password check dot count is less or actually that should be or this is an, uh, this is the n ampersand basically is going to say it's, it's a way to have two conditionals in an if same or yeah, basically have two, two conditional. So this is a conditional which is returns true or false. So if the password count is less than eight or greater than, if it's less than eight, it returns true. If it's not less than eight, then it, it's a uh, returns false. And if you want to have more than one, you do something, well, not even more than one. Sorry. If you want both of these to have to be true, then you use the and, but if you only want one of them to have to be true, then you use the or, which is this. Because if you think about it, the if statement is going to check if this and this, if they were using and, but we're using or, so it's going to check if this or if this. So that means that in this case with the or, only one of these have to be true when with the and, both of them would have to be true. And for our form validation, we want this error to throw if any of these are true. So if the password, so if the, if this one is less than eight, we want it to throw. And let's say this is less than eight and this one isn't, then we want it to throw. And then we also need to, if password, uh, does not equal password check. row case um passwords do not match Let's say app auth error passwords do not match 
All right. What else do we need to validate for? I think that's it. All right. So once we do that, we can call our register and let's, let's just copy this from the sign in shout out to copy and pasting can be, can be, uh, can bite you in the butt sometimes. So be careful. <laughs> and the light went out, but we're still coding here. Uh, this is register. And we just register with the email with the password. Cool. And this should work now, to be honest, I don't see some, I don't see why I would not. So let's run this and find out why it's not going to work. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, we're, we're optimist here. So we're, it's going to work. It's going to work. I'm going to hide myself. So, so what's it called? So you don't see me uh, in the dark. All right. So we're testing the register and before we test the register and I'll just bring myself back. Um, let's see how, what, who do we have here? We only have one email. All right, cool. So let's try to register now. So in here, let's see, let's do Rocky. Actually, let's do Colombia at gmail.com. Password is, what is my password? Or just the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I want to do a successful one first and then let, we'll do one with uh, error handling. It worked. We signed in. Yay. Yay. We sign out. Now let's go back here and hmm. Let's try to mess this up. And before wait, let's see. It should it'll, it'll show up here. Yeah. Col Colombia. All right. What do we want to do? It should print the error down here. So let's clear this, open the simulator. So this, yeah, this is the first error, invalid email. Let's put a valid email and let's not have a password or the password length don't match. Yeah. Which these technically could be together, right? Cause them not matching. Well, one of the, yeah. Cause if one of them is less than eight, they technically don't match. Food for thought. Um, but let's, or let's say they, they say they are greater than eight, but they don't match then. Then we get the last one. Cool. So it's working. Our form validation is working. All right. Now let's work on the forgot password. And that should be right here. This button is the forgot password. So let's go to our view model. We'll have to create that function. And that means we have to go to the off service and create it first. So we have register sign in, sign out. Let's put this right here under uh, above sign out funk reset password. I believe we need an email address with this. Let's see. And I believe it's async throws as well. So we say auth reset password. Here we go. Send password reset. So all we need to pass in is an email. So we'll pass that try away. I don't, what does the result even send? Send password reset this one. It doesn't even return anything. That doesn't matter though. Oh, we need to mark the function async throws. That's why it's giving us the issue. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so now it's created in <laughs> just one line of code, right? You could, you could call that in your view model, but that's not what we're trying to do. So now let's go back to our sign in view model. Cause we'll have to create the funk 
Reset password. I'm creating it here, but one thing to note is we have to actually create a view because what I want to do is I want to show a sheet for the forgot password. So I need to create a Boolean here. So this equal to false. Show forgot password. And let's create a var, call it forgot password. This is a string because this is what's going to bind to the text field in the forgot password. All right, so let's go back here to sign in. And we need to create another sheet. We use this one is presented will be dollar sign view model show forgot password. You can get rid of this. All right. So now we need to create a new view. So a new file Swift UI view forgot password. This should be a pretty straightforward view. It's just going to be a V stack. stack with with the text field and we can use our firebase text field please enter your email and we have to bind it to something and what we can do is we can create a bindable var of our view model and this will be the sign in view model And we can just say sign in view model. And now we'll bind the view model to the forgot password. Refresh this and it's just a text field, but does it work? I enter in the simulator and it's not working. I mean, in the preview, it's not working. I don't know if it's my keyboard or if it's the preview. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep working on the UI because underneath it, we want a button and we don't care about this in this button. This will be the one to reset password. Let's just create a text called reset password. Make this bold, some padding. Let's uh, go to the sign in button or go to the sign in view and we are just going to copy this style in here. Let's see how this looks. We can copy, we can copy all of it. We can change this to fill. And change this to dot white. And at the top of this, we can add a text. Let's make this reset password. Cool. And you could, you might want to add like a, are you sure? Cause this will reset your password when they press on this button, but we're not going to do that. We're going to add a title here. All right. Now let's go to our sign in view and let's put this in here. So we will say forgot password and we'll pass in our view model and we'll use presentation dense dot fraction. 204 and let's see how this looks. We got a, we got to put in code in our forgot password. Show forgot password, set this equal to true. Now let's click on this. We'll let it load. Boom. This is way too much. Let's do three. Point three. 
That's good. Let's add some padding to our VStack. Forgot password. And we just add some padding here. Maybe make this bold. Let's see. Forgot password. There we go. And with this, I think we're, we're messing a step, right? Cause we called this. Now we actually need to write our code. So I'm going to copy this, paste this in here. And if we want to follow similar formatting, we should probably do something like this. Cause I'm thinking we could just also, if we want to be very, um, what do you call it? Very lazy. <laughs> Let me first call this function and the string is forgot password. We could wrap this in a, we could say we could put a conditional, but then we wouldn't really know if it, uh, there was an error. So uh, yeah, I guess we should throw, we should throw some way. Yeah. So we're going to rename this to Validate sign in form funk validate forgot password form. And I'm calling it a form, even though it's just one field, because that's, that's what you call things like these. And you never know in the future, maybe you have to add another element to the forgot password. All right. So we need to validate this and we can kind of just copy this. Um, and instead of email, it's a forgot password. Try validate forgot password form. We should call this reset password. And I guess we should just, uh, stick with the formatting and call this reset password as well. And we're going to rename one more, this one, you could stay with forgot password. I'm going to just go with reset since that's what we're going with here. Ah, I guess I do need to name, rename this. We'll call this forgot. <laughs> I accidentally capitalized these two. All right. Now this is working and it's throwing so we can actually catch if there's an error and specifically if there's an error with this, which is good. So what's left? Let's go to our sign in view and actually let's just run the app. And we can actually test now the forgot password too, but we're going to play around with some things and let me, open, let me open up uh, Firebase as well. All right, I have Firebase opened up. I'm probably going to have to use my real email here because if you send the email reset password to this email, I won't see it. And this says it's running. Oh, there we go. So we're not signed in. Let's sign in. Jason at gmail.com. The password should always be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Super secure. This works. I'm going to create a new account with my real email. Shoot me an email if you, um, uh, you want to say hi, we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hit register. Boom. I think that account is created, right? Let's, uh, where's Google refresh this. Boom. And I think that's my real email. Let's go back here. Sign out. And let's try to send an invalid email. What do we get? Yep. It couldn't be completed. 
What happens if it's a f if uh, if it's not an emo in um in Firebase? Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, we get that. Let's try it again. Yeah, you get an error. Let's try it with my email. And let's go back to our view model. Because one thing I realize is when this completes, we can uh, show reset password equal to false. Because I'm not sure we haven't set up our logic to know if it's completing or not. I am going to look at my email though. If I open up my email, I get something like this. Follow this to reset your password for, this is your project name you put on Firebase. Then you can update it. If you didn't ask me, you can ignore this email. Ah, so this would be from whatever app name you had. Like, so if we were chat GPT, <laughs> It'd be chatgpt.firebase. And all right, it'd be, it'd look like it's coming from the team at a, whatever company you are. So that's good. And that means it looks like it's not, um, it doesn't throw an error if you put a wrong email that doesn't exist. Let's see. And this is not dismissing because we need to, um, rerun this. And now we should dismiss. So if I go to, if I do Columbia, Columbia, gmail.com, remove, kill the terminal or. All right. We hit reset password. It was successful actually. And we know that because we got here and we didn't get any errors. But what happens if I put a mumbo jumbo? Ah, it's still successful. Cause I guess Firebase doesn't want you to know if, uh, that password does exist in the off system, which is fair. So now we're going to do some little bit of error handling that you should have in your app because it's going to be important to not just let the user sit there if something goes wrong. So to do our error handling, we have to go to our service. And we need to do that here in our sign in and register functions. What we need to do is we need to create a do catch. And in these catch blocks, we will catch these errors. So let's create a do catch. And the reason we're catching them is because we're going to catch them and throw our custom error. That way our view model, let's go to our sign in view model in our sign in view model. This is where we're catching the errors. So when we catch this error here, we are going to be catching an error that is going to be sent from here because we don't want to catch the, well, I mean, you could catch the Firebase error. I mean, you could just throw the Firebase error, but I want to set it up where based on the error, we're going to display a particular alert on the screen, on the user screen. So in order to handle that, we need to catch the error from Firebase to know what the hell is going on. And then we got to figure out from there what to do. So you guys can actually Google this and you'll find a lot of resources and talk about this on Stack Overflow because this is kind of a... This has like been changing a lot, like the Firebase, I think it's like Firebase auth error codes. You'll see a list of this and that's kind of what I'm being using here to catch these errors. And if you look on Stack Overflow, you'll see something along the lines of this, where you're going to set the error equal to error as NS error. And then we're going to switch on the error code. And in this switch statement, we'll have a bunch of cases. And in these cases, we can reference the auth error code, which is provided from Firebase. And you can see here, these are the different codes 
and different type of errors that we will get. And you could go through and like switch through all of them, to be honest. We can do something like this and you can overkill your error handling, which is in some apps you might have to write. Like if you're in a big ass app, if you have a big team, you know, and like you have like a million users, then for UX, you might want to have very particular error messages for certain errors. We are not going to do that. Actually, we can keep this here and we can just delete what we're not going to use. So we are not signing in with credentials. This actually we could already use, we could use this one since this is the register with email. Invalid email, wrong password. Too many requests, user not found. I'm just going to get rid of a few of these. Mm -hmm. User credentials already in use, weak password. I don't think this is thrown. I mean, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight as a password. So, but I believe in your Firebase auth settings, you can set up settings to require strong passwords and put rules in there. These don't look like we need them. We're not using phone number. We're not using any of these. <laughs> We're not using any of these invalid ID provider. Just scrolling, seeing if any of these would be useful. And it looks like nope. And if we get any other errors, we can just default. And we'll throw a default error. And I believe we have an enum somewhere called auth error, right? I'm going to cut this and put it in our app service or auth service. Just because we're going to throw these errors in a second. And one thing I want to do is I want to create a localized description here. And you could create a localized description or you could, uh, could just conform the string and set it equal. So like set this equal to the error message, but we will use the localized description. And to do so, we need to use of type string. Oh, hit command B. And then we need to switch on self, I believe. Yeah, there we go. So we need to set this up. And this will be, please enter a valid email address. This one is please make sure password is longer than eight characters. Actually it's longer than seven characters because it would have to be longer than or equal to eight characters. Math or logic. Passwords do not match and let's add a period period <laughs> uh, it's been a long time so we need to add some cases in here and i'm just gonna have one app error for the whole app you might, sometimes you might want to break it down because there's different, like these are form errors technically, and we will have registration errors and also, um, like sign in errors, but we'll just all put it under auth. Make our lives easier. So what's the first one? So invalid email address, email already in use. Invalid email, wrong password, 
And I think technically we don't have to handle this because it's being handled on our own end. And then network error. That's another case. Another case I'm going to add up here is invalid password. Mm hmm. And what do I want to do for too many requests? I guess I'll just present the error for network error for that case. Password was incorrect. Please enter. Please try again. Let's just say please try again with the correct password. I am not the best at these strings here. I wonder what companies use. You might be worth to Google or just ask ChatGPT. This email, I believe we should probably capitalize this, is already in use. Please sign in or use a different email address. Why do I capitalize E? And not A, I don't know. There, oh, we gotta make the string. There was an issue with reconnection. Please try again. And we can, we will say app auth error, email already in use, invalid email, app auth error, invalid password. For this, since we're just going to use, actually, we'll keep it in here because we could just get rid of it and let it get handled by the default. But just like in case in the future, we want to handle the way we're changing it here. And I forgot to say throw here. Sorry. <laughs> throw, 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 throw. All right, camera died. So we're going to go no camera for a little bit. Let's see, we can just copy this. All right. If we want, we could uh, use an optional here just in case this for some reason crashes or fails. And we literally just copy this in here. And we can copy this in here. Do catch. All right, so now we're we're do catching, which is cool. Let's see if we get wrong password. So we can actually run this. And if we get wrong password, then it should we should see I believe we're printing localized description, so we should actually see the string. Let's go to our view models. Yeah, we're printing the localized description of the error, so. So this is the JSON account. We can go back to Firebase here and refresh this. All right, this is there. We can um, just put a bunch of gibberish. And let's try to sign in. Ah, you see? We got this one. I believe we are only catching. I believe we have an issue in our auth service. I think it's only throwing this, the default one, because it's a network error is the fifth one. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yep. Uh, but there's a few things we need to handle first. First is we actually need to update our catch statement. We can say let. Error as app auth error. And then we can also have a default catch. So if it's, if it throws something that's not the app auth error, it'll be something totally different. And you'll see the difference here because it's just print the string now and not just this. 
Let's see. And if this works, we will copy it into the other functions. Let's see. Jason at gmail.com. Gibberish, sign in. Ah, you see, there was an issue with the network connection. That is being caused by this. We need to change this to NS error. And you can remove this. And we will have to add auth error code. And we will have to add raw value here. So that's all we're going to do. And you'll, you should see this in the stack overflow. If you look it up, this is one of the solutions they provide. Not entirely sure. I thought I could get away with, uh, casting it as an app. Uh, I mean an auth error code, but looks like we had an issue. And now let's see what happens. So I'm going to type in my email and put a bunch of gibberish. Oh, looks like we still get just the invalid one. Oh, and that's cause I only implemented this fix to the register and not to the, not to this one. So we need to rerun it one more time. I'm going to write in my name, Jason at gmail.com, put in a bunch of gibberish. Looks like we still get this. So we're going to come back to this. I'll have to look this up in a second. I want to do something though. Because it looks like we are, we are able to catch the error here. And we want to do this in this view model and also in the register view model. Since doing it this way allows us to print the string here, even though this is not the technically the correct one. And let's just print it. So now I'm going to close this. And now we need to think about how we want to present the error. And we can do that just by prayer, calling alert. We can call this one. And then that means that in our view model, we will have to create a var show error. And we will need a var called, um, what did they call it? localized error, localized error, which is of type. Say view model. I believe this is binding, right? And what do we say? This is the action, which should be a text that says, okay. And we get this issue, which is all right, because we can just, we can just use this one. The localized string will be oops. We will bind it to the view model dot um, show error. The action is going to be a text that says okay. And this is also going to be a text. This will be a default cool. And that means we can then let's call this here. So we will say show error equal to true localize error equals error dot localized description. We will show this. Let's see then.
This should throw us an error if we enter the incorrect password on sign in. Oh, there we go. So let's do that one more time just to make sure that the app is not crashing and my keyboard stopped working on the preview. So I'm just going to run it on the simulator. Jason at gmail.com. Sign in. And <laughs> the reason that the, that the button is, was, or the, the okay, it was grayed out, right? Was actually because this needs to be a button, which is surprising. I've used just the, I'm using this one just so I can easily get rid of this and do that. I've used just the text label before and it, worked fine like i didn't need to create a button so this would be false all right and we should this should work now it should uh let us click away so this is still not working so i'm gonna run it on the simulator jason at gmail.com there was an issue. Please try again and you can dismiss it. Cool. Let's do the same on the register. So on the register view. We have the register view model, so we're going to paste this. Show error, set it equal to false, localized error. There was an issue creating your account. Please try again. That's just a default. And we can go back to our sign in view model and look at what we did in here. And I'm going to remove this print and, oh, it looks like we need to paste this in here as well. And we need to paste this in here. I'm going to leave these prints in here just as we do a little bit more debugging because there's one more thing we need to do. All right, so does our error go away in our register? It does. Let's run the app and let's try to register with, oh, I guess an error we can try to register with is an email that's already in use. So let's do one, 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 one. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Oh, I think this one has more than eight. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it caught the error. So that's good. That's really good. That means for our, in our off service, it means this is working, right? Cause we already in here and we got this one email already in use. So what happened here? In our sign in, is our code any different? If so, let's just do this. Sometimes, sometimes you do this and it, there's like some weird change somewhere that you're not even aware of. Hit command B. And now we've pretty much done error handling. Um, I would look into the wrong password thing from Firebase. It looks like there is, there's a weird error where we tried to sign in with an incorrect password and it just tells us, well, I believe we get a default error or we get a did not permission denied error. So this isn't thrown, which is weird, but on the register, this gets thrown. So not sure what's going on there, but now you guys are ready to implement Firebase auth into your app. We have the whole off section in here. The code base will be on Patreon. This was a dope. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was very fire. Sign up for the Patreon if you did. 
like, comment, share, subscribe. Hope you guys like this little crash course diving into Firebase Auth. And let me know if you run into any issues, implement it into your apps. And good luck putting it in your app and pushing that app to the App Store. Um, you'll need some thick skin with the Apple review process. But if you guys follow along with this video, then this should get you there. And if not, we're just going to have to fight Apple review together. But I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Let's load up these project, the final project one more time. We have this smooth and clean app here. If you forget your password, you get this and you can just send you a reset email. We can register here, which is dope. Our UI, we might want to conform it something like this. That's a little, maybe a challenge for you. Maybe put this leading and then add the, the, the X here to dismiss it. And also, if you enjoyed this teaching style, check out iOS Dojo. And also, I host the iOS Dev Podcast with weekly episodes where I sit down with fellow developers and we just chat over the iOS development and they share their knowledge and experience over the past years of building apps. Definitely worth checking out for iOS developers. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.